What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for watching. If you guys watched my last video where I'm catching a kokanee out on Lake Tahoe, at the very end of the um, uh, the video I talk about my next trip is going to be hitting up Pyramid Lake. Um, if you haven't heard of Pyramid Lake, I, I definitely think you should look it up. It is a bucket list worthy destination um, fishery uh, loaded with Lahontan cutthroat trout is what they're famous for. Um, but anyways, I'm headed out there in a week, and I'm game planning right now. And then, you know, as I was going through my thought process, I thought, I was thinking, you know what, maybe I'll just, uh, you know, maybe my you guys might want to hear about how I go about thinking about what kind of baits I want to take with me and and things. So there are really four categories that I, I think about, um, yeah, maybe five that I think about uh, whenever I'm game planning for um, any fishery on any given day. Uh, the first foremost is looking at make sure you understand your target species. Um, in this particular case, I'm going after Lahontan cutthroat trout. Uh, very similar to, to other species of trout uh, in terms of you know how you fish for them. Um, the next thing I'm going to be looking at is going to be weather forecast, right? Make sure that I have enough clothes. Uh, make sure I'm, I'm comfortable. Um, you know, making sure that I'm going to be safe on my kayak. You know, obviously don't want to... Uh, be out there in high winds, uh, but just understanding what the weather forecast is going to be. And I know right now we're still a week out, so it's not going to be very accurate. Um, I don't know if it's actually ever really that accurate, but uh, regardless, you know, having a good sense of the days that are leading up to it really helped me in, in terms of planning. Um, and then water conditions, understanding if the water is going to be, you know, if we're dealing with clear water or, or you know, cloudy water. Uh, stained water, muddy water, those types of conditions really helps with your bait color and bait selection. Um, and then what techniques you want to uh, employ out there. So in this particular case, uh, I'm going to be using two techniques. Um, I'm going to be using uh, my BFS, so bait finesse system, which is really um, finesse fishing, uh, ultralight finesse fishing with bait caster. Um, and uh, trolling. I'm going to be trolling from my kayak. Um, and so um, I was thinking about taking my fly rod out, uh, but this trip, you know, I really I haven't had a lot of opportunities to uh, BFS fish over the past few months. Uh, mostly just A, haven't had a whole lot of time to fish in general, and B, there just hasn't been, um, the, really just hasn't been the opportunity for me to go out and, and do some BFS fishing. I've, I've had a couple of uh, trolling sessions, but um, yeah, this is going to be my first real opportunity uh, of the season. This is the fall season I'm talking about. It's the season opener for uh, Pyramid Lake, and we're going after Lahontan Cutthroat, which can get very, very big. Before we get started with the baits, uh, let me just do a quick screen share. I would love to show you guys the location of Pyramid Lake, where we're, where I'm going to be going. I'm going to be I'm uh, actually going with a fairly I think large group of kayak anglers um, from the if you're gonna if you're not familiar with them it's the fresh and salty kayak angler crew um, they got a page uh, a group page on Facebook um, shout out to them amazing community um, amazing people uh, you know no politics none of that crap just uh, people who just love to kayak fish and help each other out so big shout out to fresh and salty uh, kayak anglers uh, but I'm going to be headed out with them, and um, yeah, we're going to be camping. I'll show you where we're going to be camping, what water lines we're going to be working, um, and then we're going to you know, take you through again the weather, the water, how I'm looking at all this stuff, um, and then after that, we'll come back and I'll show you the bait selection. All right, let's go. Okay, so here we are on my screen. Um, as you can see, Pyramid Lake uh, is located right here. This is <clears throat> just across the uh, California, Nevada uh, state line right there. Um, you can see San Francisco is going to be where I'm coming from. You got Sacramento, you're making your way all the way up through. You got Lake Tahoe over here, then Reno. And then from Reno, you just head north uh, to Pyramid Lake. All right. So Pyramid Lake, again, this is the uh, <clears throat> An, an amazing fishery. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, I really do suggest looking it up. Um, if you've heard stories of people fishing from ladders, um, you know, they throw on their waders or their wetsuits and they pull, 
bring the ladders out and they set it up out there and um, they're throwing the fly rods and stuff like that. That's Pyramid Lake. Um, and a uh, great, great place. But here's, let me just show you. So we're going to zoom in here to the uh, Pyramid Lake and Marina area. So in about a week, uh, this is where I'm going to be headed, essentially right to this Lake and Marina. And you see this beach area right here. This is where we're going to be setting up camp. And then uh, there's the, uh, the shoreline there we're going to have. That's where we're going to be launching our kayaks and everything. Um, in terms of waterways we're going to be working, we're going to be working essentially from uh, Lombardo Point. Um, pretty much from this point down to this point and really kind of just work into different depths right here uh, and all through kind of just all through um, so yeah right around here and then back up um, so that's the area we're going to be working there are tons of places to camp and fish all around the lake uh, just make sure that um, you know you're following all the rules um, speaking of rules uh, before you head out there Definitely recommend checking out their website um, because Pyramid Lake is not your, your usual lake in the sense that it is privately owned by the Paiute uh, tribe um, and they have their own set of rules. So, if, you know, to start uh, your state of Nevada fishing license um, really is not valid there. You don't need one, it says, but if you have one, great. You still can't fish uh, even though you have a license there unless you get a tribal permit. This is a private permit from the lake, um, from the Paiute tribe. Uh, other things to remember about this lake, uh, this is a barbless hook only lake, uh, and they will enforce that. So uh, make sure that if you got your barbs, you know, you pinch your barbs down, and if you're pinching them down, make sure there's no little residual micro barb on there because uh, I've heard stories with the warden out there coming around and actually doing the um, yarn or the uh, cotton ball over the uh, barb to see if anything sticks. Uh, so just, you don't want that to ruin your day. Just make sure that you are running barbless. For me, if I pinch down and I still feel a little barb on there, I'll actually take the Dremel and, and Dremel it off. All right, this is an artificial only lake. So you can ha you cannot use uh, any organic matter. So that is, you can't use worms, you can't use salmon eggs, <clears throat> the paste base, like the power base or the Potsky baits, um, no scents. So you can't, you know, even if you're throwing like spoons, you can't put any scents on them. So just keep in mind, you know, this is a no bait lake. Um, and then if you're planning on keeping, uh, the other thing to keep, in, to keep in mind is this lake is a slot size lake, meaning um, you can only keep fish between 17 and 20 inches or over 24 inches. Everything else has to be released um, and you have to have the proper measuring um, tools out there. So I'll be out there with my catch board um, to ensure, you know, I'm not planning on keeping anything. Everything I'm going to be doing is catch and release, but it's always nice to get a measurement on, on um, the catches. So yeah, just remember if you're planning on keeping that you are following this, this slot size rule. The other thing to remember is even though they have, so with the slot size rule, they even have you know, their, another restriction, which is you can only keep two of the small sizes. So you can only keep two between 17 to 20 inches, or you can keep one small, so one fish between 17 to 20 and one larger than 24 inches. You cannot keep two over 24 inches. So just remember your, you, you know, uh, just be very mindful of that. Um, you cannot fillet the fish on the reservation. So, you, you know, if you're thinking you're going to catch something and you want to fillet the fish when you get back to shore or on your camp or, you know, from your kayak or wherever it might be, uh, you are technically not allowed to do it. This is because their wardens or in this case, their rangers need to be able to verify the sizing. And if you cut the fillet off the fish and you throw away uh, the carcass, they won't be able to verify it and you probably will get fined. Um, obviously safety first, you gotta have your VHF radio and the Lahontan cutthroat season opens from October 1st to, July, uh, to June 30th. So again, that's in a few days. We're gonna be there, um, 
you know, for the early season uh, La Haunt and Cutthroat. All right. If you want to learn more about the other species that they have in there, there are only five species of uh, fish in the lake. Again, the only trout species is the Lahontan cutthroat. They are native to this lake. Uh, this lake used to be, I think, is, is a residual of Lake Lahontan. Um, and if you've seen Lahontan cutthroat trout anywhere else, they all came from this lake. So um, a very, very cool uh, kind of fact to know. But um, yeah, you know, check, check this out. They have some other fish on there. I'm only going after the Lahontan cutthroats. All right, so now that we understand the location, we understand the species that we're targeting, um, and we understand the rules and regulations, uh, we're gonna talk about weather. So, okay, so if we look at the weather forecast right now, um, we're seeing, <clears throat> this week we're seeing uh, some mid 70s uh, weather. Um, got some wind, seven mile per hour, with 12 mile per hour wind gusts, looking pretty good. And then this weekend, Looks like there's some rain and we see a pretty big temperature drop. So we go from kind of the mid-high 70s down to the high 50s. And then we start to see a little yo-yo effect here where it starts to make its way. So it was a high, then it goes down to low. Then it starts to make its way back high again. And when I'm going to be there, which is probably going to be right around here, the uh, the 6th here, um, looks like the temperature is going to start dropping again. So... Uh, that's good. I think that the weather conditions are going to be great. Right now, wind is looking pretty good. Uh, looks like uh, 8 miles per hour on Friday, 4 miles per hour on Saturday. Uh, Sunday is 4 miles per hour. That's pretty good. If we drill in here to the Saturday. <clears throat> wind gusts, 10 miles per hour. Okay, all right. So that's going to be a... Uh, that's, that's great. Um... My comfort zone really, you know, on my kayak is if we see uh, up to 10 miles per hour sustained wind is really, you know, anything beyond that. Uh, so 11 plus, um, it starts to get a little bit sketchy. So uh, I like to see that single digit number. And then wind gusts, um, I'm pretty comfortable with wind gusts up to call it about 20, 20 miles per hour. Um, but, you know, we're looking at 10 miles per hour right now. Uh, again, this could completely change over the course of the next few days, but at least right now it looks pretty good. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Um, okay, now if we look at, next thing we're going to look at is water. So we understand now the, the weather forecast, we understand the species. If we look at water conditions, let's refresh that. So today was about 68 degrees out on the water. The water temperature was 63 to 67 degrees. That's phenomenal. So this tells me that um, what I'm learning from based off of this is if we continue to see water temps, surface water temps between 63 and 67, then I'm feeling pretty comfortable that the fish will come up to at least five feet. Um, like in the morning, for example, they will come up to feed. So I don't have to worry about going too deep. Um, maybe, you know, I'll probably be targeting again, if this continues to, you know, to, uh, stay like this or even drop a little bit lower uh, i'm probably going to be going top water um top lining uh down and uh you know one foot two feet deep um from the surface uh and you know probably down to about 15 is is probably where i'll go so that's that's going to be the zone i'm going to be in um but very very good water temperature um and this is specific for trout so trout really like to be in the kind of call it the 52 uh, 65 is where they're they're, they're very active uh, actively feeding once the water gets too warm they become lethargic they go deep once the water gets too cold they become lethargic um, and so uh, just be mindful that's where water temperature comes into play when you're dealing with trout and again that will take into account in my bait selection um, so yeah this is this is great this is shaping up to be a great weekend I'm really looking forward to it now that we understand all these variables, let's dive into the bait selection. So first and foremost, I'm going to start with the uh, bait finesse gear. So I'm going to be taking with me three BFS rods. I got two Dobbins 701Cs uh, and then my buoyancy old 18 or old 18 buoyancy uh, BFS rod. Um, I'm going to be mating those with uh, 
two Shimano Aldebaran BFSs. I think it's the 2022 um, in two different gear ratios. And then a uh, Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS 2023 uh, reel. Um, so those are going to be three reels and my three rods I'm going to be taking. And the way I look at my spread of how I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to use each rod for, again, it's going to be slightly different. So I'll start with the hard baits first. Um, so I'm a big fan of minnow baits and shad baits, uh, jerk baits. Um, and so for the BFS style, obviously we're talking finesse gear. Um, to start with, I'm planning on using this right here. This is the Rapala. Uh, it's a sinking mini shad, finesse shad I think is what they call it. Um, I've swapped the hooks out for barbless singles. Um, obviously, I, I prefer using singles in general, um, and the barbless is for per the Pyramid Lake regulation. So um, this right here is going to get me down. You know, I cast it out, let it sink in. Uh, on the retrieve, it's going to dive between four and five feet, um, which I think I'm, I'm hoping uh, you know, will be good. So if the water temperature is let's call it anywhere from 65 degrees to 55 degrees, anywhere in that range. Um, I do think that the fish will come up uh, at least up to five feet, four or five feet to hit this. So as you can see from a color selection side of things, I went with a natural, uh, more natural color. So you got your black tones uh, with the, uh, the chrome on it. All right, next one I'm going with is gonna be the Rapala Countdown Elite in this purplish color. I forgot the name of the color of this one, but this is the Countdown Elite. Uh, this one, you cast it out, and for every second, it drops a foot, or it drops a foot per second. So cast it out, give it a 10 count. This thing's gonna be a 10 feet deep, and then I can start to retrieve. Um, so I'm taking this, gonna be swapping out to Barbless. Uh, also bringing out another color this is if the water is going to be stained uh, or <clears throat> the visibility is going to be really low. Um, that's going to really help. Um, and then <clears throat> for crankbaits, I have these guys. I think these are AliExpress specials. I can't remember uh, who makes them, but you can see the big lip on it. Uh, these are floating, so you cast it out reel it in on the retrieve and this will probably dive to about 10 feet i'm guessing about five to ten feet lots of great action on this crankbait um got the vivid color as well as we got more of a natural color bait so those are those two and then the final hard baits that i'm going to be taking out with me for bfs fishing are going to be these rip and wrap um shads so these right here cast it out it's going to sink, and as it sinks, it's going to give it some good action on the sink. Um, and then really, you're kind of just twitching it in, jigging, twitch, twitch reel, twitch reel. Um, and it's just going to make it pop uh, up and down. And so hoping we, we find some schools and we'll be able to drop right into them and uh, entice them with, with this. Likewise, going with a vivid color, a loud color, and then going with something a little bit more muted, a little bit more natural. Um, and I'm going to be switching those out to barbless as well. All right, jumping over to plastics. So the plastic side of things, um, I got a couple of different styles of plastics. One of them I'm going to be going with one particular style are going to be uh, these Yamamoto Zakos. Um, as you can see, these are three inch um, swim baits right here. I'm taking the white and uh, transparent with silver flakes can you see that right there um, also going with the crawfish red and then the kind of just go-to color for any water condition which is black and uh, blue flakes so I'm gonna have this these on a rod um, and these are gonna be mated with a uh, I think these are called lucky uh, scrounger jigs. So put the, um, the Zacco minnow on there and then cast it out. As you reel in, that little lip right there 
gives it this kind of chatterbaitish like action. So it just kicks the bait back and forth, gives it a lot of action going through uh, real fast. You know, if you're reeling fast, you're going to get a lot more action. You reel slow, it's just going to kind of slowly kind of, uh, it'll slow the action down. Um, but that's what I'm planning on putting on uh, a rod right there. Again, color selection is, is going to take me through the full spectrum of clear water to stained water. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with these. Um, all right, next baits are going to be... The Z-Man <clears throat> um, minnows. So these are, uh, and we're gonna put them on probably these ghost jig head, uh, big eye jig heads. Uh, as you can see, these are also three inch, yeah, three inch uh, minnows, Z-Man. Um, so I have the Zakos on the scrounger, kicking off a lot. This right here, is going to be a little bit more of a softer presentation um, and you can see this color right here is I'm thinking I'm very bullish on this color so it really gives it that minnow like color this is called the green lantern um, you can see it's got the green on it with the <clears throat> kind of the transparent white down the bottom and then the all white low white so or sorry pearl white um, so that's going to go on another set up it there and then I'm gonna have um, gonna be alternating with mule fishing donkey tails and we're gonna put the donkey tails on Z-Man shroom, he shroom heads here um, and uh, let's see do I have one out I thought I had one out maybe not um, if you haven't seen these let's see um, it's got a little paddle tail on it it's a, it's a smaller profile bait with a paddle tail, so it gives a nice little flutter on the back end right there. Um, these are going to be good if you know if the fish are being very very particular and they're not um, being overly aggressive. Um, these right here, I think, are going to really uh, win it right here. So, um, and then I'm bringing out the wild card here which is a chatterbait. So I'll bring a chatterbait out. Oh, and there's, there's an example of donkey tail right there. I have it on the chatterbait right now. Um, so I'll bring a chatterbait out. I've never caught a trout with a chatterbait, um, but uh, I know they work. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll give this a try when we're out there, probably with the donkey tail. Um, all right, and then kind of my confidence baits uh, in case everything, nothing's working. You know, we got our grubs in black, power grubs. Uh, got a, the Easy Shiner. So the Kitek three inch Easy Shiner. This is a smaller profile paddle tail, very similar to kind of like donkey tails, um, the meal fishing donkey tails, but you know, just these are Kitek's. Um, and then uh, I lo absolutely love these. Notorious jig, custom jigs. These are the black mamba worms. It's got the black on top with the transparent on bottom and gold flakes. I have just absolutely killed them with this. So this is a confidence bait. We'll probably throw this on a you know Z-Man Shrooms um, jig head as well. Cast it out there, just let it kind of drop and do its thing and just twitch it in again. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my BFS setup. Uh, it might seem like a lot, but it's actually not very much uh, stuff. Um, it's really three different kinds of baits and uh, just different color selections and different sizing of, of everything. So that's going to be my BFS um, game plan right there. Okay, switching over to trolling. So trolling... Um, I'm bringing out a few different things as well. This is my uh, case I made, um, my barbless kit, and I got a bunch of card bits in here. Uh, my go-to, if 
if you guys have seen my channel, you know I love the Flicker uh, Flicker Shad. So, uh, bought a few more. I got the Rainbow Flicker Shad Five. Got the Rainbow Flicker Shad Seven in case they're going to be deeper. And then I got another Fire Tiger, both in the Five and the Seven. Got ourselves a Rapala jointed scatter wrap. So this is very similar to a your standard, your traditional uh, jointed Rapala, except if you look at the lip, it's got that big cup there, which really gives it a lot of action. Yeah, so again, we're targeting uh, fish that are usually very aggressive, very predatory. So you you know, I want to give it a lot of action. I really want to piss those fish off and have them come hit it. Um, as you can see, when turns of color selection, going fire tiger again, and then something with a little bit more of a natural color. This is another scatter wrap, gold, brown tones, uh, reddish tones, and then uh, moving on, taking a couple minnows with me, deep diving minnows. So we got a. Flicker Minnow, this is the 7. This will dive to about mm, 10, 15 feet, I think. And yeah, another Minnow, different colors. Um, maglips, always got to have some Maglips. I'm taking the Clown with me, one, one Clown. Another Flatfish. Uh, in the bloody frog color pattern. Uh, let's see. And then, you know, I got a jointed flicker shad as well. Um, and then for spoons, I'm going with, you got your traditional Pyramid Lake specific spoon in this, uh, cracked orange, I don't know, I think it's supposed to be kind of like the bloody frog color as well. Um, and then loony spoons. So if you haven't used these, these are awesome. Um, gonna be, got taking a few different colors out. Got the pink, the blues, uh, the, the yellows, yellow tones, um, a variety of different colors. Um, so this is what I'm taking for my trolling gear. Uh, that's it. If I can't catch anything with this, um, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, I'm not going to catch anything. Um, all right. And then the last thing, um, I guess this is really for probably more for the BFS side of things is, and I don't know if I'll actually get, use these or not, but I may bring out some flies, right? Some flies with some tungsten heads. Um, so I can cast these out, let them sink. I got a streamer fly. Come on. Got a streamer fly right there. And that's probably the primary color, but I got a variety of other colors as well. Uh, got some reds, got some greens, some blues. Um, so this is obviously very small footprint, three little cases for the flies, uh, plus a little pack of tungsten weights. Um, and this is really, uh, kind of worst case scenario. Nothing else is working. Uh, and this is kind of the Hail Mary, we'll say. But yeah, that's what I'm taking out with me, guys. Um, really hoping to get on some of these cutthroat. Last year went out, just had an absolute blast, hooked onto a ton of fish. We're doing 100% catch and release. Um, and yeah, super excited to be there. I'm gonna be awesome. Well, that's it. I rambled on for a little bit. I know it went through a lot of material, a lot of things. Um, just, you know, really my message here is before you go to any fishery, if you're the type of person who um, doesn't like to carry their entire arsenal of tackle, um, or you like to plan ahead, 
um, have a good game plan. And that game plan, again, is understanding what your target species is, what are the weather conditions going to be like, what are the water conditions going to be like, what techniques do you want to use uh, on any given day, um, and then, you know, for your baits, you know, understanding all those, other, you know, all those things that we just talked about, now comes your bait selection, what colors do you want to use, what action do you want to go with, um, what depths do you want to fish? Having a, a very good game plan is just part of having a successful day on the water. Um, and hopefully you're not going to be out there going, oh man, I really wish I had that bait. So um, probably will happen anyways. Uh, but who knows? Um, thank you guys again for watching. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, you know, please comment below. Let me know like what are, what's in your game plan. Do you game plan? Uh, what are you thinking about? You know, are there things that um, I, I'm sharing that are new to you? Or maybe there are some things that I'm not being you know, mindful of that maybe you have some thoughts on that are part of your game plan. Please feel free to share. Uh, would love to learn and, you know, keep learning and sharing, you know, my knowledge. Um, yeah, this trip is about a week out. And, uh, yeah, next video, hopefully after this, will be... Uh, me on the water. So, all right. Thanks again, guys.